First, I want to express our gratitude for this hard work and for the long hours that you've put into the uh, discussion that is needed to help solve our facilities problem that was identified by the legislature and the governor here in the Senate on my floor. And as you continue today, you spent considerable time discussing at what point a school should be considered for complete replacement for the revitalization. And we too have talked about that tipping point when it no longer makes sense to put taxpayer dollars into the revitalization of these older schools. And hence some of the conversation we've had about Sierra Vista, which is one of our oldest. We have to look always at what is more cost effective and what is financially responsible to replace that older school. But as elected trustees, we have a statutory responsibility, which we take very seriously, to debate public policy and decide public policy as it relates to not only this issue, but also to curriculum, school safety, fiscal management. And this particular issue of replacement and revitalization uh, that you have identified, we considered after the last meeting when the question came up and said, please give us that list. We truly believe that that request at this moment is something that is very, very difficult to produce and it is just simply not that easy to do in this time frame. We do want to suggest a solution, a minimal solution to this, however. Finding that tipping point and determining whether the older school should be demolished or retrofitted is driven by a very complex set of factors, many more than just the age and the condition of the building. Energy efficiency, which Mark has touched on before, historical significance, site availability, and adaptability are all issues. And I am reminded again and again that our schools are little communities. They're very, very important to people who live around them. And those communities do change over time. In the time that you have remaining to decide what will go on the general election ballot uh, as an initiative for school construction and revitalization, we would like to ask you to confidently rely on us as your elected school board to reach the consensus on whether a school should be rebuilt or revitalized. By statute, we do receive input and recommendations from our oversight panel, and this does include members of the city and county commissions, uh, elected officials, community uh, experts in finance and construction finance, engineering, gaming, and public works. Two trustees, and that's Mrs. Coleman and Mr. Karn, also serve on this panel. And we have an additional community member who has a general interest in education. So I mentioned a proposed solution. We suggest that the effective way that we might address this issue for you as a committee, and more importantly for this community, for these children, better understand and participate in this process, and to capitalize on this discussion that you brought forward here, brought to our attention, is the board would create a citizen's advisory committee. The committee's task would be to help us, the board of trustees, to decide on a case-by-case -case basis Looking at the schools with not only the all of these existing factors that we've started to identify here, but also gathering that public and local community input that is so important, not just that broad overarching view. So we feel that this advisory committee would provide yet another forum to demonstrate our commitment to public accountability as taxpayer. Our commitment to taxpayers has to be true and strong. And we do want to engage the public in a review of the key factors and the costs. In conclusion, I would like to say thank you to all of the committee members for your hard work and your dedication to put something before the voters that will help us solve this our construction challenges over the next seven years. And I do pledge all of us to my fellow board members that we will 